as a church and state. Listen, I'll meet you after 11 p.m. early morning. With Ronnie? Yeah. How was your relationship? Oh no, I I basically lived in his house. Wow. It was different. Yeah, I ate by the house every day. They had a spot for me at the table. Uh, his kids were like my brother and sister. I took while they were in jail. I made sure everything was. I was like literally devoted to them, wow. and um, that's why I was so heartbroken when he did that to me when he came home. Um, literally, I mean, they were like my family. Wow. Like I like I like like was with them twenty four seven. So, and the funny thing is, is that everyone thought like, I'm the one that cooperated first. No, people know now. They had guy wearing a wire in their crew. They didn't even know one of his best friends wore a wire on them for three years. So it's like, nobody knew nothing. Nobody knew this. You know what I'm saying? So, and then you have uh, multiple other guys that were cooperating on the case. I was actually the last guy to cooperate and nobody knew that. But they made me as the poster boy, which I'm not justifying. I still cooperated, but I was like the last guy on the case. They already had the case built for years. So it's like, you know, they all were blaming me. And then when it all came out and he seen his best friend was on the internet wearing a wire, he felt so stupid. You know what I'm saying? So that's, that's, this is what happened. Everyone hated him, you know? So. And bad leadership. No, it's, it's like, this is, this is like, this isn't just like a mob. This is just, if you have a business, right? You need the right leadership, yeah. the right protocols, right. Your people, treat them with respect. Uh, right. So we're going to conclude soon, but, but, um, so, and just this is more of a newer thing. You know the rapper Six Nine. I'm assuming you heard of him, right? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. So he rolled on, you know, his. Don't, with see with him, with him, I'm a little nervous for him, and I would love to talk to him because he told on gang members, Bloods. Well, that and they're actually still very violent, and um, <laughs> and, you know, you know, they 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 will shoot you in broad daylight. I mean, they don't give a shit. You know I mean? I, I was locked up with the Bloods. They're bad, man. Those kids are, I said, you give me seven of these kids, I'll take a state over. They're bad, you know what I mean? So, like, I'm a little nervous for him. Um, me, the mafia is not the same. And plus, I was a shooter. I, I was capable of anything. You know, I don't know his background, what he was doing. I know he's young. But um, with the Bloods, you know, what he's doing, I know he's successful, he's rich, I'm happy for him. I'm glad that he's out, changed his life. You know, he's seen the treachery in any organization, it's the same. Yeah. But he just has to be careful as far as the five boroughs with them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because they are, um, they will kill you. That's for sure. Now, now the other thing is, is um, and I know it's a different family, but with, and I knew you grew up with the Gambinos. We didn't get to that, but check out Bye. the I'll put links to the podcast. But with a mob boss getting killed by some, you know, weirdo 24-year-old. Now, I, and I get both sides, and I want to understand. Like, to me, I always think, that the fact that this kid is still in jail, like alive, or his family's still alive, you just gotta remember there's a whole Sicilian undertone. Well, they'll wipe over there, but they'll wipe out your whole family, right? Like, it's just, right and they don't, they don't do that over here. Yeah, so, so ha like, what's gonna happen to that kid, well, whatever that kid's family? Nothing. And they'll never bother the family. Maybe they'll blow the cars up, do something like that, just to get, you know, something like that I can see, because, like, I, Ronnie had me blow up a witness's uh, uh, brother's car, stuff like that, you know. So I've done stuff like that, but not like actually hurt the person. But he had me set cars on fire that people were cooperating against him on his case and um, his first case. And um, but you're not supposed to go after the family. You can't hurt no innocent yeah, people. Women, right, yeah. so they, they would never sanction that. They would never order that. You might get someone to do a, a, like a rogue maniac boss that might say, "Do it on the low, yeah. sneak them," you yeah. know, something like that. Because you're not supposed to, but just just get them, sneak them. Don't let no one know that we did it. It won't be sanctioned. So yeah. they'll sneak. Right, they'll make it look like something random. But that kid, if he don't go to the feds and with his mafia guys, he'll be fine. No one's going to bother him in Jersey. You know what I'm saying? No one's really out there. You know what I'm saying? In a state jail, wherever he is, no one's going to bother him over there. He goes to the feds, yeah. no, he'll get dealt with. Interesting. Now, he'll get dealt with. now just there's always been a more cur a personal curiosity because uh, my family's from Italy and, and I've been to Sicily and, and I do think – there is a little difference between a Sicilian gangster right. and an Italian American gangster. Have you had much of run ins from guys from the other side, old school guys, that kind of stuff? Or was it more well, watered down by the time you came in? We actually don't like the zips. That's what we call them zips. Oh, wow. We can't stand them. We call them grease balls. We don't like them. We, we really don't. We can't stand them. They're around. We have them in our crew, like around us, but we don't like them. They, they're just different than us, you know what I'm saying? So we really didn't get along with them over here. At least I didn't. You know, they always like to have their little coffee shops and their little, uh, you know, that, that that stuff like that. We want card places. They're just more, um, more like cartoon characters. They wear like the whole suit still. You know, it's like a joke. 
I'm not walking around with a fucking fedora and a cigar and a suit. I don't care. I tell my people, like, Ronnie G wasn't like that. Ronnie's more of a, Ronnie would never wear something like that. These guys are more like, um, you know, like, caught, like from the movies. You know what I mean? That's not what we want. Yeah. Wow. Now, we're going to wrap up soon, but I just have one or two more. So, so g- give me one or two gangsters to this day that you came across that you still respect. Like, no matter what, like, listen, Tom, I call it like it is. These one or two people were the real deal. Who were they and why? In my time? Yeah. I mean, like, guys that I personally met or just no? Vinny Asaro. Vinny Asaro. Vinny Asaro definitely is a a gangster's gangster. And um, he is a mafia through and throughout. He will never change. That is his life. He went by the true code. He is definition of a mobster, if you want to say. Did he mess up? Did he, he, uh, you know, break a lot of rules? He did, but he was a... A real gangster. Um, another one that I, I personally met that I would say, no joke, serious guy in my time, I would have to go with, I mean, I didn't personally know him. I'm trying to think I'll give you another good one. Because a lot of the guys are younger. Yeah. And uh, they're not really like notor- Nicky Carrazzo. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Nicky Carrazzo. I met him maybe once or twice, but I'm saying he, uh, he's a real serious, another mobster. He worked under my Uncle Andy. He was, uh, um, I could say he's definitely a definition of a gangster also. Now, conversely, give me one person who just, like, you know, maybe publicly, it could be a little or before your time or during your time, who was a big name that was in the papers but behind the scenes was like a, like a joke, in your opinion? This may be John something. Jr. Who was that? John Gotti Jr. Okay, wow, okay, wow. Yeah, yeah. he's actually, he, people don't even realize that People used to make fun of him in my area. I swear to God, he was like, like when his father passed away, they were like jokes, that family. I swear to God, I'm not just saying it because I'm friends with Eli. I'm just being, I was best friends with the grandson. The younger grandson worked for me. They're like, they're, they should be actors. They want to be like, they, they just love like, that's, that's their thing. He was like nothing. Like he just made, he, he lived behind his father. Uh, uh, he was like, to me, to everyone in the he was like a clown, you know? So, okay, so now fast forward 2020, you're turning your life around, you're actually type of writing a book and doing stuff for yourself, but you're also, as I understand, doing some talks to kids or starting to right. do some outreach. Walk us through what 2020 looks like for you. Oh, it's a lot, man. I got a big documentary going on with uh, people from Italy. We're going to show uh, different families and all different guys that came up in the different families with this, uh, with this guy in uh, um, Italy. And... Um, Right now, when the coronavirus is over, this whole thing, um, we're going to be doing our motivational speaks with kids in schools and stuff like that. Um, we got so much, I, I got so much stuff going on right now, man. It, it's crazy. It's overwhelming. I get hit up all over the all over the world. People, you know, so happy and could relate to me and thank me and everything like that. So um, it's becoming pretty good, you know. Yeah, God bless. It's not, you know, it's not like you did it and then you know you're actually doing something to help. I mean, right. I think the coronavirus, and, and I know there's different opinions. Do you think the coronavirus is hurting, hurting or helping the New York mob? Oh, hurting definitely. Sports betting's off. <laughs> yeah, that's a big bro. That's a big income. Yeah. Sports betting, you kidding me? That's definitely hurting them. You think loan sharking come around though? You didn't get your PPP money? Uh-huh. Yeah, loans. Yeah, or? yeah, loans are still going good, but sports betting is like bread and butter. Yeah, that's the bread. Loan sharking is too, but sports is a big income for them, man. Big. And Gene, thank you. This is, it's a Sunday, uh, folks. And, and now it's obviously been the internet, but it's a Sunday. Thank you for taking your time. So, Gene, how can we find, we'll put some links, but how can we find you? Huh? Um, with, with me? Uh-